Hey y'all, welcome back to Life More Abundantly with Chauncea. As always, I pray that you are doing well. I wanted to come on here to release this word that I had been holding on to, um, but I always wanna make sure again that I'm hearing from God and that it's directly from him. So I wanted to come on here and share this song that God had literally just dropped in my spirit regarding kingdom marriage. This song um, is from 2001 and it's like a, R&B song, but it's in regards to like how your kingdom spouse is feeling about you. And again, as I always say, take this word back to God uh, so that you can know whether this word is for you in your current season or if it's for you in like a future season. And so you'll know if this word is for you. Like I always say, it will ring in your spirit and it's just a confirmation as to what God has already been speaking to you directly in your one-on-one -on -one time with him. And so the song is from 2001 and it's called Lifetime by a group called Prophet Jones. So the first verse says, I've been in love a time before, but it didn't work out right. This love for you, I can't ignore. I tried to run, but I just can't hide. Nah, nah. And so right here, um, it's literally just breaking down that your kingdom spouse, they know that they've been in love before so they thought it was love but it didn't work out and so they tried it again with someone else and it still didn't work out and they're just coming to the place where the love that they have for you they can't find in anyone else like i mentioned in the video that i posted last night about their returning requesting that you would give them a second chance and so they're coming to the place where they can no longer ignore how they feel about you. They can no longer ignore all the signs and the visions and the dreams and the, the spiritual promptings that God is giving to them to point them in your direction. And then it goes on to say, I tried to run, but I just can't hide. They have tried to literally just suppress how they feel about you and they've tried to ghost you. But even in their ghosting, God has still placed a strong urgency and a strong weight on them um, to go back to you. Because again, this is a God connection. It's a divine connection between you two that literally only came from God. And so... Um, it's nothing that you could conjure up. It's not um, infatuation. It's not lust. It's genuinely a craving in your heart, a desire in your heart that was placed in your heart by God. God placed it in your heart and God also placed it in their heart. So even when you're apart, you still feel a strong love for one another. Verse number two says, girl, I put my trust in you. I'm not afraid of what my boys might say. Because I know that my love is real. All I'm asking for is. Now, this is both for men and women. So just apply it accordingly. And so I'm uh, just breaking down verse number two. Girl, I put my trust in you. I'm not afraid of what my boys might say. So your kingdom spouse is going to put their complete trust in you. Again, well, underneath God, their trust in God allows them to trust you. Okay. So they're going to, they're not going to be afraid to trust you anymore. They may have. Um, had trust issues in the past when you were, you know, in relationship or just communicating, or maybe they just struggle with trust issues from a child. Um, but with you, with God bringing it back together this time, they aren't going to have those trust issues because God is mending their heart. He's working on them, making them whole just as, as he has and is with you. They're not going to be afraid of what others would say, of what their homeboys would say, or she's not going to be afraid of what her homegirls would say. Like they're willing to cut off anything and anybody that would stand in the way of being united with you. Okay. Um, and then it goes on to say, because I know that my love is real. All I'm asking for is, again, they know without a shadow of a doubt that this love is real because God has revealed it to them. God has revealed it to them. They're not going to question, okay what am I feeling? Like, what is this? Is it real? Or is it just, you know, like one of them moments where I feel it. And then later on down the road, I don't like they are going to know that it's real and that it's true. And it's genuine because it's coming directly from God and God, he himself is and has revealed it. So the chorus says a lifetime is all that I need. I'm ready to settle down and give you all of me. I'm talking about a lifetime. 
So they just want to spend, they don't want just a moment with you. They don't want just a season with you. They don't want just a few years with you. Like the commitment that they will have when God releases them to you, they are going to clearly state that I want forever with you. And it is a forever thing this time, as I'd mentioned in prior videos, like when God sends them back to you this time, it's not just for a season and then God's going to split you up. It is for a lifetime. And that's why, again, it's so critical that you don't allow any impurity or you don't give any leeway to the enemy to come in and infiltrate what God has joined together. What God has joined together, let no man put asunder. Let nothing separate the two of you, okay? Not your thoughts, not coming together just to have sex and taint your union, um, but be very, very prayerful and fasted up and prayed up, even when you're together, even when God brings you together to seek God's direction and to seek God's pace for your relationship. OK, go at God's pace. And so it says a lifetime is all that I need. I'm ready to settle down and give you all of me. So I know that they may not have been ready before this. But now they are because, again, God has done and is doing a current work within them that is so great where you're not going to have to force them to marry you. They're, you're not going to have to force them to spend time with you. You're not going to have to force them to want to be with you because they are making up in their minds now that I want a lifetime with him. I want a lifetime with her. I'm ready to settle down. I'm over the games. I'm over you know, dating more than one person. I'm over with lying and cheating and the, I'm over the scandals. I'm over that. I want to settle down and I don't want to settle down with just anybody. I want it to be her. She's the one that God has for me. I want it to be him because he's the one that God has revealed to me and I'm ready to give them all of me. I'm ready to give her. I'm ready to give him all of me, not just a portion of me, but all of me. How I act with her or him in person will be the same way behind closed doors. I'm not going to switch up. I'm not going to change it. I'm not going to say I love you and then tell somebody else that I love them. Like they are going to be so deeply committed to you. And it literally just flows from their commitment to God. That's why you want them to find God first and then find you. Because when they find God, they will find themselves and God will lead them to finding you. And it will be so pure. So their love for you will be just radiant. It will not only be seen on them, but like when you two come together, people will know that it's just, it's, it's uncommon. The love that you have for one another is uncommon and it's rare. This is, again, this is how you will know that it is directly and divinely orchestrated by God. People will be influenced by your marriage your kingdom marriage. They will be encouraged and empowered to wait on God for their kingdom spouse because of the influence that God has put on your union when you come together. And so the second part of the course, it says a lifetime is all that I need. Don't ever take your love away. I'll be here always. So they, they, again, they will commit to spending a lifetime with you and they'll let you know that I need your love. Don't ever take it away. I'm willing to be here now forever and always. Verse number three says, I can't believe I feel this way. I was always a player going hard. Just right here, this blew me, okay? This is for the individuals that um, you were with your kingdom spouse. You were connected to them. Maybe you were just in communication or you grew up being friends or you were actually in a relationship in the past. But they had, you know, <laughs> they had issues with committing. And so maybe they were talking to other people while they were talking to you. Maybe they were dating other people while they were dating you, texting, communicating, whatever the place, whatever the um, issue was, but they were known as a player. They were known as um, a heartbreaker. They were known, you know, out in these streets, as we call it, they were known. But God, again, God is doing a work within and on their hearts where the player in them is gone. The heartbreaker within them is gone. And they're like, I'm done with the games. I don't want anything or anybody else but you. And then it goes on to say, so many girls, so many games, I left a trail of broken hearts. So they're going to acknowledge they're wrong in the past. 
They're going to acknowledge what they've done, what they've said. But they're also going to acknowledge the fact that I'm done. I don't want it anymore. You can have it. I just want you. Verse number four goes on to say, but somehow you came along, came along and set my soul on fire. So they will know it. That when God brought you into their life, something shifted in their life. Something changed. They may not be able to put their finger on it or really understand what it was. We know that because it's God. They will know that there's something different about you. No one else can be who you are. No one else can do what you do for them. And it's not even a physical thing. It's not even a material thing. It's just when they're around you, the vibe is different. When they're around you, their confidence is different. Okay, they can laugh and smile and crack jokes off of the simplest things because it's with you. They feel comfortable with you. Come on here. They feel comfortable with you. Okay, (laughs) I bless God. They can be themselves with you. They don't have to pretend. They don't have to be extra. They don't have to lavish you just to get your love. No, it. It's a mutual love. It's a genuine love. It's a pure love where y'all can be friends and lovers. And what I mean by lovers, I'm not meaning intimacy or sex. I'm meaning y'all genuine, like you just love on one another. It's a mutual thing. He gives and she gives. She receives and he receives. You both pour into one another. You're not going to be depleted this time around, okay? Okay. Your kingdom spouse will pour into you as you pour into them. And then verse number four goes on to say, and ever since that day, my life hasn't been the same. So they recognize that ever since the moment that I met her or met him, my life has not been been the same. Even several years down the road, my life has not been the same. I keep trying to compare my relationships with the relationship that I had with him or her, but it has not been the same. And then the bridge portion says, I never thought I'd fall so deep. The thought of your love, it makes me weak. You came and turned my life around. They didn't think that they they would ever fall in love like this. Because again, they were known as a player. When they think about your love, it literally makes them weak. It does something to the core of them. It shakes the core of them. When you stepped into their life, again, it shifted and turned their life around. They now question what it's like to be in love. They're like, what's it really like to be in love? I didn't think about this before, but now he's got me thinking. She's got me thinking like, man, I'm really ready to settle down. I didn't even think that I could get to the point where somebody would make me want to settle down. But she has. He has. Then it goes on to say, you broke me down. In a good way, you broke me down. (laughs) Like you stopped me in my tracks. Then it says, words can't express the way that I feel. Whatever you want, just ask. I will. Girl, it's our time. I've made up my mind. Again, I said this in the video I released yesterday. Words cannot express. They can't even begin to put into words how they feel about you. So now when God releases them to you, they are going to show you better than they can tell you. Their actions will now speak louder than their words. Remember in the past where they were telling you that they love you, they're here for you, or you can trust them. Now you're not even going to need the words because their actions will align up with their words. Their actions will speak louder than their words. You won't even have to doubt or question it. Because it's God doing it this time around. It's not you trying to make it happen. It's God making it happen. Then it goes on to say, whatever you want, just whatever you want, just ask, I will. They're going to be willing to literally just pour at your feet. Their heart, anything that you would ask of them. If you have a concern, you know, babe, this makes me uncomfortable. Like, is there something we can do to... Make sure that this doesn't come in between it. Like, I got you. They are going to be so comfortable with accommodating you. It's not going to be no type of problem. They have made up their mind that they only want you. They will do whatever it takes to have you. 
and they will do whatever it takes to keep you. Child, whoever this word is for, I pray that you receive it and be encouraged. Be encouraged. Stop questioning how they feel about you just because you're separated for right now. Again, God is working on them. God is working on them. And although you may not be able to hear what they are feeling and how they are thinking towards you, I need you to know that these words that God lays on my heart are an encouragement. They're literally an answer prayer from God, letting you know that I'm answering your prayer through my mouthpiece. I'm letting you know that this is how your spouse feels. You may not be able to pick up the phone call, but I'm going to send my servant. I'm going to send my prophet. I'm going to send my vessel to let you know how they're feeling about you. Mm, My God, I'm going to let you know. So be encouraged. Again, as always, I pray that you would receive this word well. Please continue to like, comment, subscribe, and share. Whoever this word is for, I know that God will allow them to come across it. If you would like to sow into this word, um, again, all those details are, are in the description box. And again, when you sow into this word, I need you to know that you're not merely just sowing into me or the ministry, but you are sowing into the ground of your promise. I have received like different comments and stuff um, below the videos and things that um, I'm scamming and all this stuff. And I know it's nothing but the enemy. He does not want individuals to reap the harvest of their promises. But every time that you sow, I call out your name to God for God to move on your behalf, whether he's bringing you together right now in this season or if it's in a future season. But I'm constantly calling out your name calling out your name, calling out your seed, asking God to intercede, whether it be with strength, whether it be with um, that immediate connection that he is releasing in the earth, whatever it is, I am calling out your name. So I am never begging and pleading with anybody to sow, but I am extending that invitation because God leads me to say whatever I say on these videos. And when God leads me to say something, I'm going to say it no matter what feedback I receive or no matter how individuals feel, I'm going to speak what God desires for me to speak because there is a blessing in your obedience. There is a blessing in your obedience. So be encouraged by this word. Again, if you desire to sow, if God leads on your heart to sow, please sow. Because when God, again, when God prompts us to do something, He's saying, if you do this, I'm going to move on this. Okay, so be encouraged. I pray that you find this word well. And until we meet again, I'll catch you on the next video. God bless.